A fellow naturalist from New Mexico sent me a video of a great blue heron struggling to swallow a small catfish. Why, he asked, did the heron take so long in subduing its prey? In Florida, I encountered a great egret behaving in a similar manner. In both instances, the birds focus their attention on two petrol spines that protrude from the fish's head. They also repeatedly dip the catfish in the water. When captured, small catfish will extend and lock their spines in place. Doing so obligates a predator to break off the prickly appendages before eating or risk having the fish get stuck in its throat. It turns out, however, difficulty swallowing is only part of a predator's problem. When the locking mechanism of a spine is broken, skin is usually ripped away from the underlying glands, which in turn release copious amounts of poison. To avoid ingesting a deadly concoction, small catfish must be thoroughly rinsed before consumed. Over half of the 3,000 known species of catfish are poisonous. Fortunately for North American fishermen, venom glands decrease in size as a catfish grows. Specimens heavier than 6 pounds, for example, typically lack the glands. Apparently, the ability to poison predators has evolved to protect young fish. Indeed, there are credible reports of bass, egrets, and water snakes being mortally wounded after swallowing catfish. Yet, as shown in the video, some birds have apparently acquired handling techniques for neutralizing their prey's defenses. Which begs the question, do egrets and herons instinctively know how to handle small catfish, or do individuals acquire the skill with practice? Small catfish are not the only prey that wading birds must handle with care. Take for instance a white ibis trying to eat a southern toad. Captured on land, the toad was carried to the lake's edge where the ibis stunk the limp body in the water. Dogs and cats that mistakenly eat toads either vomit their meal or die from ingesting the neurotoxin secreted by a toad's large parotid glands and warty skin. Among vertebrates that eat frogs, only a handful of reptiles, such as a hog-nosed snake, are immune to a toad's potent alkaloid secretions. So it is a mystery as to why a white ibis would try to swallow an adult toad. Perhaps by frequently dunking its prey, the hungry ibis is diluting the toad's nauseous venom to tolerable levels. Although the live toads will inflate their bodies to avoid being eaten, in this instance the lifeless frog appeared small enough for the ibis to handle. Yet the predator repeatedly failed to finish off its prey. Watch closely and you'll notice that the toad's protruding front legs prevent the ibis from swallowing, not unlike the extended spines of a small catfish. Unfortunately, the ibis flew across the lake before completing its meal, leaving me to wonder, are ibis immune to a toad's neurotoxins? Also do the front legs of these amphibians, when attacked, automatically lock into an extended position?